Wow, wow, wow. This is a serious tool. Yeah, holy cow. Really works. Um, yeah, that other thing is uh, not recommended from my standpoint at all. Uh, we got, let's see, I'm just looking through here. We've got uh, public chat. If anybody's ever used this, they've got uh, questions, uh, polls, and uh, handouts. So we're just waiting for more people to jump in. Uh, I'm not sure where I can see who's in or not. Individual permissions. Oh, okay, attendees, we got nine. Okay. Well, that's that's probably about what we had before. Uh, so go ahead and put in the uh, chat if you can hear me and see me okay. We're going to start over just like we would normally, just make sure that uh, we know who's here. Say hello, where you're from, and uh, we're going to get started here with the slides. I see all okay. Rejoice. FOMA, so far so good. And Jay in the house again. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, George. George uh, in the group uh, donating this for the uh, presentation here. So let me just check on the uh, screen. If I were to do a Chrome tab, I can do that from here. Awesome. Awesome, guys. I think we're in business. This might be my new favorite uh, tool. <laughs> um, let's see here. Just getting some things prepared because I had to restart the computer and all of that. All right. So we got 12 people in here in the group. Let's make sure that uh, we give a few more minutes for people to join us from the webinar debacle of 2020. Oh, you know, it's it's 2020 themed. Everything's gone wrong this year, so it, it's perfect. It was a perfect webinar uh, kickoff. Rich O'Donnell watching all the way from Alpha Centuria. All right. Nice. Must be, uh, we're really, uh, whoa, that's cool. I can move myself down and around. Um that's great, guys. This is great. Uh, let me turn off the webcam. Let's see. Turn the camera off. Okay. All right. We got 12 people. I think that's that's what we have. And we are recording. So I'll go ahead and we'll edit this recording afterwards. Um, but this is a great tool. It even has drawing. So you can uh, draw on the screen. Big marker. Yeah. This is good stuff. It was on purpose to get Big G off our tracks. John Doe says, since they're always listening, yeah, especially to our uh, stuff. Anyway, we're gonna, let's go on with the um, the presentation here. Hopefully, can you guys see this on your screen using Magic Page plugin? Did you see my presentation slides? I'm assuming you can. Okay, awesome. So we'll kind of just get to it. Basically, the standard stuff, you know, put away the distractions, hold on to your questions to the end. But actually, there's a Q&A thing. So if you get a question, just throw it in the questions and answer tab. And we'll go ahead and get to those uh, questions afterwards. OK, I promise. Um, you know, get ready to learn. We're going to have some some cool things we're going to show you. And maybe some things you haven't uh, thought of before. Some things if you're uh, new to this whole process of building um multiple websites under the same uh, structure, uh, you, you're going to definitely pick up some things from this. Okay. So what's ahead? You're going to learn what is an evergreen mass page website. And you're going to learn why building an evergreen site will put you on the road to more leads. We're also going to show you what tools we use behind uh, building those sites effectively. And you're going to learn the common mistakes that people make in building evergreen sites. So kind of real simple forward uh, look ahead. So an instruction, basically, who am I? Well, uh, I have 24 years experience in internet entrepreneurship and consulting. Um, I have done SEO since the late 90s and been following uh, all of the different algorithm changes and chasing Google and Google chasing me uh, for a long time. But uh, 
I, I'm I'm sort of in the gray hat area. I'm not like fully black hat. I find that a lot of that stuff uh, just doesn't last very long. Uh, but I do like try to provide some good um, user content that uh, answers the question in Google and uh, you know tries to say loosely in the guidelines um, that they that they've put out over the years. But uh, Google has not always been so transparent of things. And uh, the way that there's sort of a uh, tipping point uh, of who are the winners and losers in Google, I always like to try to give the underdog an advantage. Um, I'm a web developer. Um, I've been developing software for a number of years, mobile apps, uh, web apps. In fact, I started my very first web app back in the early 2000s uh, with developers. I don't code myself. Uh, I just structure uh, programs. And when we had COVID-19 hit, I had a whole lot of extra time on my hands. So uh, I ended up deciding, you know, I had a, a few of my big customers uh, drop off. So I lost about 80%, 85% of my income all in like a one week period of time. And um, some of that has come back as people, you know, uh, started opening back up in business, but people were very worried back in, uh, in March. And uh, my consultancies and, uh, lead generation uh, clients, uh, some of them just backed right off. So we, we just can't afford to do anything. And also leads dropped off uh, in, a, in a number of industries. So I, I know you may be struggling. I was struggling and I decided, well, I'm going to take the time that I have and my knowledge and put it to work uh, for us. And uh, it kind of coincided at the same time as uh, Mike Martin and uh, Magic Page plugin had added in a few new features that I've been looking forward to. And uh, Keith Best in the group has been looking forward to as the import and export. And uh, now that we have that, it opened up a whole bunch of different things that we could do. And uh, the, the Magic Page form actually started as an experiment to see if we could build a, all of these short codes outside of WordPress and then bring them in. So that's why it's it's been an evolving process. And now it's sort of becoming uh, its own uh, web application. It's, it's getting more and more sophisticated as we go. So we're gonna show you some of that, all right? So what is Evergreen Mass Page white website? Well, the Evergreen Mass Page website is the process of building semi-cloned copies of a master site with dynamic changes to make the copies somewhat original. Uh, they're often used to mass produce websites that deal with localized content and landing pages. Now, similar to local service directories providing localized content, uh, which can be helpful in search so a user can get their intended product or service, it can also be used for reputation management, SEO mastery, lead generation, affiliate offers, and traffic building. I think a lot of people here on the call um, are in the lead generation space, as we asked on our Facebook uh, site this week. Uh, but there are a lot of other ways that you can use these tools. And um, I think that um, if you use your imagination, uh, they can they can help you in a lot of ways with your agency or your business um, directly. What I, I was thinking of this earlier today, I asked the question, you know, it seems like a basic question, but what do you think the uh, what do you what do you think that mass page plugin or magic page plugin and mass page tools is best for? And I asked the industry, and I want to take a little snapshot because I want to see what you folks think a year from now or two years from now what you think these two tools are best for. Are they best for a lead generation agency? Or is it best for a lot of other agents, other agencies and use cases as well? Because I think over time, you're going to uh, see that these tools can be used for a lot of different things. Um, we built a um, database uh, manipulation tool that allows you, it's a, a data set generator that allows you to uh, do things with affiliate offers or with other products and import them in as locations uh, inside your data set. That's a very underutilized technique, but for advanced to um, you know mid-advanced users, I think that's a really cool way to build out websites. I did that uh, to build out Craigslist uh, ads for different areas. And um, I put in 
uh, some custom data and just I would change the page to whatever city and I would have my Craigslist ad custom written with spin text and uh, things inserted. And I even used my dynamic uh, images to uh, create the image that goes into the ad. So each image was based off a of magic page plugin. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. And I don't think we've even scratched the surface of what, what, what is possible with it. So I'd like to take a little snapshot. I think, you know, this year we'll go and next year we'll take another snapshot and see if this is just for lead generation folks, or if it's becoming more for SEO, maybe reputation management, maybe it's for building, you know, dynamic websites. Who knows where it's going to go? But uh, I just like to take that little snapshot. It's kind of like, you know, where you take, uh, you measure kids against the uh, the wall and you put a little pencil mark and you put the date of where people are at. I'd like to, you know, come back to that post a year from now and see what people are thinking. Okay. So why build Evergreen? Well, here's the thing. It allows you to cut the time dramatically in building lead generation websites. That's the obvi, right? But the other points are you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So in other words, if for some reason one website stops performing as well as others, you you have a, a group of websites that you are uh, pulling in leads from. So therefore, if one goes down, one, one leg of the table goes off, you have several legs of the table holding it up. So that's, that's the thing. If you're trying to build a real business that depends on leads as much as your livelihood, you got to make sure that you have multiple, multiple legs under the table to support your uh, business and your, um, your family's uh, livelihood. So that's why we, we suggest building multiple uh, sets of uh, websites that um, that target specific areas so that your web pages can be very, very uh, highly targeted and, and answer those relevant questions um, to the user. Now, Google tends to rank smaller sites faster than trying to take on Goliath all at once. Um, if you reverse engineer even these Goliath sites like Home Advisor and Thumbtack, they all started small in certain areas with just a certain limited number of niches. And they've all expanded out like that. And I'm not saying you can't build the next Goliath. You certainly can. But typically, they start with um, building it from, from smaller um, sites. And the nice thing is, is if you build a lot of these evergreen sites, they can also give you uh, precious links going to your future Goliath site. Uh, severability. Uh, you can rank and rent a specific uh, asset in your, in your um, empire. You could sell uh, just a part of your empire and rinse and repeat and build more sites. Um, you can delete any part of your network and start over if there's an issue or something happens with a domain and uh, you have a negative problem or you lose a domain or you lose a GMB, you can always just, just you know break it off and, and start off with something else, okay? Uh, you can capitalize on the traffic. You know, obviously you can sell your ads, uh, you can sell traffic. Uh, sell affiliate offers, leads, etc. Um, you can get the backlink power of having multiple IP addresses and websites all pointing to wherever you'd like them to point to, uh, sort of that single niche PBN that Mike talks about. Um, that's kind of what you can do with these evergreen sites um, and also build links, uh, links and leads at the same time. So uh, you can build that authority under a single niche, okay? Uh, you can also use what I call as natural split testing with Google's actual algorithm. If you throw a thousand darts at the wall and uh, you do it again and again and again, you're going to find that there's a pattern that uh, the purple one and the green one hit the bullseye more often. It's maybe a more accurate uh, dart, right? If you want to use that analogy. Well, when you when you build numerous websites and you find which ones are the winners regularly, and then you reverse engineer what you did or what's different about that site, you know, you can learn some very valuable information. Um, and the way I typically build these sites is it's an ongoing process. My master site keeps evolving so that my cloned copy sites keeps getting a little bit better and better each time because I'm adding in what I've learned from previous, what you would call experiments, and, uh, and trying to improve it each time to make them better and better. 
So it's never like, you know, one and done. You're always trying to evolve it and make it a better process. Okay. And you can evolve your sites and learn what the SEO winners in your networks look like and uh, rinse and repeat, find, find what works and, uh, and keep on going. Anybody, does that everybody agree with what I've uh, posted here so far? Why evergreen? What is evergreen? Go ahead and put in the chat if you're uh, following what I'm saying. Do you need me to slow down? And if you have any particular questions, go ahead and put them under the Q&A. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right. So what are the seven biggest mistakes? Okay. Well, some of the biggest mistakes are thinking that artificial backlinks and tactics, uh, we're going to woo Google into ranking your site. A lot of times those things can be very toxic because of the algorithm is looking for things that are not in the balance of a natural growing website. So you want to make sure that what you do is natural and normal and uh, not, not um, you know, over, over uh, you know, steroids uh, <laughs> of your website and then think you're going to win the race. Um, it doesn't work that way. You have to sort of build something up of value and uh, wait for some natural signals and then sort of, you know, uh, guide Google along where you'd like it to go. Um, thinking page speed, technical errors don't matter. Um, page speed, we're obsessed with. Uh, we've done some things with our images to try to make them so compressed and load quick over global CDN and, uh, you know, the caching and everything like that so that uh, your site, your images are up all the time. We're obsessed with this. Um, so we're, we're always trying to keep this uh, top of mind. And technical errors, the template that I'm building, I'm telling you guys, it is still early, early on it. So if you're using my template to build out web pages, it's got what I would call errors in it, okay? Uh, we're trying to iron out all those errors copy by copy of that. So as we evolve that, it's going to become so good, so fast, you know, things like what theme we're using. I don't like what theme we're using. We're using Ocean WP. I don't think it's as fast as it can be. So we're going to go after that and we're going to fix that. So we're going to try to get it so that you have the, the most efficient setup that you can have without having a whole lot of, you know, footprints and make sure that it, it's just, just the way Google uh, wants to see pages. Okay. So that's on the, the template side of things. And uh, we think that technical and, and speed does matter quite a bit in rankings. Okay. Uh, thinking that a thin website, you know, with, without real content, without standard pages, you think that that's going to rank. Uh, it really doesn't. You have to actually, if you're going to build a website, you have to take the time to write the copy, do some manual spin text. I know, guys, it sounds like work, right? The easy button just went in the closet. <laughs> You're going to have to go and do some work uh, to really build these sites and to make them last. It's either you're building an asset or you're building a piece of junk. Uh, do you want to build a piece of junk that doesn't rank uh, over time? Then then just you know hit the easy button and you'll, you'll end up with a piece of junk on, online. And, and it'll go where everything else is going um, over time, and which is in... The recycle bin for Google, um, forgetting to process images and use legally obtained images. Um, in the U.S., there are definitely ambulance chasers. Uh, that, that is a term that we use for you know lawyers that are looking for opportunities to strike and uh, make money off of people misstepping and making a mistake or having an accident. Um, the process of processing images. Uh, you know, I think we've done some some really things, some great things that I'm very, very proud of. And I'm going to show you some of that uh, coming up on this webinar. Uh, but between you now making sure that you get legally obtained photos and making sure that you process them, uh, very important. And our forum is going to help with that quite a bit. OK, uh, using YouTube videos embedded in your page, one of the greatest ways to let Google know that your page is there is to officially embed a YouTube video. It doesn't take too long with all the tools out there that you get from AppSumo and you know Fiverr, you can order some pages. 
um, I'm sorry, some videos and, and get some videos for your lead generation operation and um, having authority links on your website. Hold on one second. Let me get a, a drink here. <coughs> I'm going to turn down the heat. Hold on one second here. Okay. So, yeah. So, you want to make sure that you are being a little bit like Wikipedia and sharing out to helpful links in the industry. And uh, it's uh, it, it, it's one thing that we, we've instituted into our form, and we think that it's a good thing for you to use. Um, very important is to use alt, uh, tags, title tags to some degree, um, for accessibility practices so that, uh, people that are visually impaired or hearing impaired have the tools that they can have that describes what your page is about. Um, for years, uh, SEOs have used it, uh, to kind of boost what the page is about, but I also think that, uh, it's used for PPC relevancy and, uh, so if you're trying to come up with a high uh, relevancy score, you want to make sure that you have your keywords in the page. You want to make sure your alt tags, all of that stuff is in line with your um, your main keywords. Okay, and so um, these are sort of like you know percentages uh, of uh, efficiency, but they all add up. They all stack up to to give you an advantage, and and that's what you're looking for is just a leg up. Uh, to get a little bit further ahead, okay? And then always thinking a pretty site is going to rank better uh, and get you more conversions. Now, my take on this, and the reason why I built the form in the simple template um, is that I, I believe that if you build this out and you wait 30 days and just let, let Google have the very simplest version of what you're going to be offering, before you pretty prettyify it <laughs> and you uh, add new, you know, design fonts and, you know, big uh, sections and things like that, uh, I, I say go first to get yourself known by Google and then take the steps to prettyify it uh, and make it look designer, you know, fancy. Okay. John Doe says, yes, the future of data set is exciting. Jeff says it all makes sense. It makes all the sense in the world. Great, guys. I really appreciate that. So what we want to do is uh, do a little demo. Uh, is anybody here in the on the call not familiar with one of these tools? Tell me which tools you're not familiar with uh, between Mass Page Tools and Magic Page uh, plugin. I got a drink of water. <coughs> I got to tell you, George, you really saved me. This thing is great. <laughs> All right. Some people say mass page tools. Uh, Michael Rete says uh, he's familiar with both. Uh, FOMA is not seeing mass page tools. Uh, so you're in for a treat. Um, uh, Jeff Green says, I'm, I use MPP, but I'm familiar with mass page. Okay. But you haven't, uh, Jeff, you haven't really used it in the real world, right? Is that what you're kind of saying? And, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. So uh, we're going to kind of go through some of that and then um, hopefully we can answer some of your questions and the like. Uh, so I'm going to go for it <laughs> and uh, I'm going to first show uh, mass page tools form. Okay. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see this. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move. We are sharing our screen. Okay. So basically this is, uh, mass page tools. Okay. It all started with just a simple form. If you guys have been with me since the beta, you've seen how much it has evolved. Uh, we have added in, uh, spin tax, automatic spin tax for you. If you wanted a little bit of help. Uh, to do spin text on the pages. I'm a big proponent of manual spin text, but sometimes you're just looking for uh, a kickstart 
and we'll show you how I, you can use it for that. Uh, we have a media manager. Uh, you're allowed up to whatever your membership allows. So for example, if you know anything about disk space, I've, I've got 102 uh, forms created and we're only using 81 megabytes. That's how compressed our images are out of 20 gigabytes. So literally we could do thousands and thousands of images hosted on here through our CDN. And they're fast, they're very, very fast. All right, so, and then you've got your forms here. Um, so basically, okay, we're in our dashboard now. And uh, so if you go into this particular business here and you hit view, you'll see what the output is. This is the output that goes into Magic Page plugin, okay? So Magic Page plugin um, has an import feature. So if you export this file, this will go into Magic Page plugin. If you download the favicon, you'll see down here, it goes in here. You can go ahead and put that into your uh, website uh, to have like a little icon, okay? If you don't want to download all the files, you hit the download zip. And uh, I hear somebody's mic is unmuted here. Um, if you go in, you can see all of the, uh, okay, you're not going to see this tab, I don't think. Uh, I am looking at a, uh, a bunch of files. Let me, let me just unshare my screen, switch screen. I'm going to do entire screen. Okay. Um, so if you go into the download as zip file, all of these images that you've imported in will be here. So we'll just go ahead and we'll extract. I don't want to extract all I want to do. Extract files. So if you go in here, they're already organized for you. So you got your logo files, you've got your standard image files, and these are all been processed with our, um, our processing system and our tagging system. Okay. So I'm kind of showing you the, 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 the output side of things, okay? And then you're gonna have an, uh, instructions and backup file that if you go here, it's gonna tell you um, a little video on how to install the WP Vivid backup file, which is that file that we're evolving. And then sort of the recipe of what you need um, to build out these pages. Um, the recipe is uh, a PDF, tells you what uh, items you need to have. Um, and uh, to do a good job and then how to open up the, uh, the file that we give you and, and everything else. So it's all right here. It kind of helps you to walk you through, okay? So the next step is if you have a client or you're doing it for your own site, there's three ways to use um, this uh, uh, thing. I just wanna make sure everybody, everybody can still see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, there's three ways to use this top section. First of all, your email address, this is not public. The full name is not public, but this is. So if your email is um, for a client, you put your client's email in here and it would save along with the project, okay? This is under new entry. And now you've got this. You've got basically three ways that you can use this top section. One is if you wanna just set a city and state as your business address, you can do that with this. Or if you wanna set an actual physical address and then change the business name to something else, you can do that. Or you can find if it has a Google My Business account, it would, it would just pull up the whole thing for Google My Business, including website. And then once it has a website, it'll scrape that, grab the schema, grab uh, metadata and things like that and put it into the form for you, okay? So uh, the reason why we do that is so that your GMB, your Google My Business, is in sync with your future website. Okay, so like I said, this, this output here is gonna go in to your Magic Page uh, website, okay? So we want that to be in sync with a Google My Business account. So I'm gonna show you three examples, okay, and how to use this. So I'm in Syracuse, New York. And so I'm just gonna put in Syracuse, New York. 
USA. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to pull in Syracuse, New York. It doesn't have a zip code because it doesn't have a specific area, but you could put it in your own zip code. But it'll put in latitude and longitude, and it's going to put the government website here. Uh, you would just put in any website pretty much that you would like if it, if it doesn't already have a client website associated with it. If it did have a client website, you'd put it right there because it goes into your schema as well. Okay. Uh, then what you would do is you change it to my business right here and you'd hit tab. Okay. So now this is using this city and this, this address is Syracuse, New York, USA. That'll go into the website like that with the latitude and longitude. Okay. And then you would pr proceed with whatever the website is that you're building this to. So if you're building it to, uh, if you're doing, building it to mybusiness.co, um, it would go in and, and scrape the data from that website and put it into the form uh, from the metadata. And we're building more things into this um, to do this different scrapings, but we're just uh, doing the metadata for right now. All right, so you can put in your years of experience, your price range, and all this stuff will go into the schema inside of Magic Page if you use our template, okay? Um, all right, so that, that's one way to use it is if you just wanted the city and state. The other way you could do it is if you had an address, okay? Say you're working from your home and your address was in Milwaukee. So you would grab this address here and you would go in and say, my business here and hit tab. Tab brings you down to the next line. So then this is now my business at this address. OK, so it sets up your sort of the, the structure because name, address, phone number is very important for uh, building up a future Google My Business. So you want to make sure that all of this stuff is in sync um, so that, uh, you know, your websites are talking about an address that talks about your business, builds sort of an entity uh, by having all of this stuff in synchronization. OK, so then if you had an actual business. So my business, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, let's do this one here, Saginaw. My business 16, that's actually grabbing um, the, the, here's one. It has a website in it. See, it automatically grabs the website. Uh, let's just do my business. College Street. So this one has an Australia uh, account and it would fill in your description and your keywords as well. And some people were asking, uh, will we integrate this with DMT, which is digital marketers toolbox? Um, I don't, I totally see ways that we could do that. Um, so we're going to actually talk to Matt, uh, De La Cru D Cruz, uh, over there and, and get his input. But I, I, I do believe that we can definitely do that. So we're going to maybe have that as a future webinar. Uh, and maybe we'll use this big marker for that. <laughs> um, all right. So next thing is, uh, so that's that's this section here. There's, there's, there's three different ways that you can use it. And the whole idea is to synchronize the name, address, and phone number across your, your future website. Okay. Um, the next thing to note is how the images are treated inside of my form. Okay. The a few things. One is we're going to reduce the image size down. Okay. We're going to convert PNGs to JPEGs, if you wish. Okay. And the reason why we can do that, usually you like PNGs, right, for logos, which you're right, it, they're great. But every single page, you have an opportunity to talk about your site uh, with the metadata. So what we do is we encode the metadata from your company, from your keywords, <coughs> your niche name, all of this stuff goes into your uh, your metadata, your phone number, your email, uh, and I'll show you that. And we can convert your PNGs to JPEG right inside this form. 
so that they can be encoded. Now, PNGs can't be encoded, so you have to convert it over to a JPEG to do that, all right? So I'm just going to go in, and we're going to take a look at the camera roll. I don't know if, uh, see if I got some pictures here of a logo. I'll just grab one from online somewhere, all right? So we'll just go to this website here, and... So they have a logo here. All right, so we're just gonna save this image and it's a PNG, so it's perfect, all right? So you'll actually see the, this process uh, take place directly, all right? This is very limited. This is a thin website, guys. This is what you don't wanna do, <laughs> all right? Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna upload the logo, okay? and it's going to resize it if it was very big. Now it says you wanna to convert to JPEG, see this? And you could hit cancel if you didn't. If you do, you just hit this, all right? And it's going to now take this image, all right? And it's gonna put the, um, the information that is above into that, all right? So if we were to go ahead and take a look at this image and put it into Jeffrey's image viewer, uh, prove that you're not a robot, you'll see that it has the, the business caption, my business college logo, it has my name in the byline, it has uh, the address, keywords, it has the location put into the, the data, okay? And uh, it's it basically created some keywords, you know, my business college logo is Sydney, okay? So that, that's the kind of thing and when you're building a brand online to have that encoded into your images just as another little marker, a little footprint that you're, a fingerprint that you're leaving around to let people know uh, where you are, right? So you can also put it in as an icon. If you had a different image, you put it right here and it would do that. So now it's creating a separate, separate image, okay? So next you're gonna put in your area code now First, you put in your friendly phone number, okay, with the dashes and whatever your country does for formatting. And then we strip out all that formatting down below here for digits only. The reason that we use that is for click to call. If you're all familiar with how to do the, the tell and AH refs to get a click to call number to work, uh, we're actually taking that field and using it uh, for that, okay? Adjectives are things like, you know, most professional, reliable, uh, outstanding, affordable, you just put a list of them. You could you could have a, a, a bunch of them ready to go and you just paste them in. But because these forms save, you can just uh, save them in here. And that's what the whole evergreen model is, is that you build up a, a, an industry and then you just change the businesses up at the top and change the logo. All right. All right. So we're going to put this as um, my business. And then, uh, whoops. We'll just call it business. I will call it uh, biz, businesses. And then we'll just skip the option there. And then we'll just call it a company. Um, my business. Profitable business. Uh, biz college. This is where we would do like actual research with uh, various tools. What we're just putting some down here. Um, business school. Um, trade school. Okay. So now what we're doing is we put in what the niche is about. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mad Libs from when you were a kid, but you just filled in adjective or you filled in a noun or whatever. So we're kind of doing the same kind of thing. And uh, it gives us the pieces and parts that we're gonna use on the template side. Now the templates, you can use mine or you can use mine just for ideas and how you can build your own template, which I, I definitely encourage you to try to do that, okay? So um, this is a very light website, so it doesn't really have a whole lot of content 
uh, to it. So it's not a very helpful website for uh, snagging a paragraph of temp template. So I'm just gonna get some lorem ipsum. And uh, just we'll go ahead and we'll generate some paragraphs here. So this uh, is a description, so it doesn't have to be too long, okay? So we're just gonna put this here. And then if you choose to spin it, you can spin it right here. I'll just show you what it does here. I'm not sure how it's gonna spin Latin, <laughs> um, but we'll see how it does. There it is, okay. It didn't, it didn't really spin it. Um, it only does an English language, so. Uh, but then if you, whoops, if we did have spin, you could hit the preview and it would show you a different uh, spin of, of that section. The other nice thing about that is when you do do a spin, especially uh, with, you know, if you manually do it or in English, um, these become the captions in the images. I think we're having a little bit of trouble with it right now because we just did this big overhaul in our images. But um, you'll, you'll have this copy that goes into each image. So each image is just a little bit different, okay? So we're just gonna go back to our lorem ipsum again. And we're just gonna grab this, this section here and uh, go back to our thing. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me just go back and see if there's any comments. Uh, you guys are seeing it, okay? Um, so we're just gonna put this in there. And then you just have your benefit. Um, these are already populated. It says place benefit one here. These are automatically there. So you can go and change those out later. Your calls to action. These are like contact us, get started, call us. These already have four contact us, call us, get started in them. Okay. Uh, video URLs. These are any watch URLs. Like if you've built a bunch of videos, you can go ahead and put them in here. And they will go ahead and do that, but it's it's optional. You, you'll have a box that you can fill in later. And there's just a placeholder video in there, okay? Lead generation this is where we recommend that you put your lead simplify embed code. If you've not heard of lead simplify, um, we'll, we'll get you in the group and we'll we'll show you what lead simplify is all about. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's a leading uh, lead generation tool to distribute leads, okay? Uh, I, I'm not going to put mine in here. We're just going to leave it and it'll just have a placeholder. So next is these description bodies, which is a real critical part of what the website is about because we recommend that you do at least 20 description bodies, okay? Because these will get used throughout your magic pages. And your magic pages are location-based pages that rotate in this content. Uh, in a block spinning manner, okay? So basically some pages will have this and some pages will not. So it'll just rotate in uh, various blocks to make the page different. And then if you did spin text within that, okay, you would then have, um, you know, some additional, some additional text. Um, I'm trying to think if I can just get a website here. So I have some English that I can actually... Uh, All right, we'll just go over business school and we'll see. I'll grab some text here. All right. Obviously, we're, we would want to have more uh, text than just this. Um, I just want to show you that you can do spin text and it'll automatically do the spin text for you. And then you just go ahead and um, once it's done, There we go. So it's now put that in there. If you hit preview, you'll see the different variations of that spin text, okay? Now we can go ahead and add more of these. So we would go into wherever your copy has been written and you would just go and grab some of this and you'd put it in to your uh, form here. All right, and if you wanted to spin that, you can go ahead and do that. So what I would do is once you've spun it that way is really go through it with a fine tooth comb and look for things that are just weird. Okay. Synonym spinning is not great. 
to me. Uh, I think it's best to um, actually manually spin that tax it um, and just like really change the, the structure around with, uh, you know, uh, different meanings. So every time it rotates, just it's not different meaning, but different uh, phraseology that is like, you know, three, four words that gets switched uh, each each time, and those are the kinds of spin text uh, spin text that I think works the best. All right, so if you had testimonials, you would go ahead and put them in here. I'm just going to grab some lorem ipsum for that, and uh, we'll just call this a, a testimonial. If you want to add another one, you would just grab another set of this. You guys are going to really want uh, somebody to help you write this stuff. If you're not a writer yourself, just so you can move on and, and, and do what you, what you need to do. Um, this is a great feature. This is the SEO targets, but it's also for a fill, um, authority links. So these links can get pulled in at random into your website. Um, so this is that authority link that I was talking about. If, if you want to sort of have the power of Wikipedia referring out to authorities, you know, find some good sites that are like associations or um, trade schools or, you know what I mean? So different places that you could safely, that are not really competitors of yours, but you could definitely send out some links to and, um, and, and encourage people to use them. So the way this format works is you put the link in, you put a comma, what you want the anchor text to be, the link title, and then comma, what you want the alt text to be. So you have a, a three commas here, and you can do this inside of Excel and then export it uh, as a CSV and then just grab all of the data. Um, if you use Screaming Frog, you could scrape your website, get it lined up into these three columns, do an export to a CSV, and then you can just pop them in here, and then you'd have interlinks going from your um, your evergreen site to inner pages, okay? All right, so that's that's how that works. Um, put your questions and decide the Q&A um, on that if you want. Um, then, okay, you have these different images. So we basically, we're gonna have a video that explains a lot of these different sections um, coming up. Um, but if you do the hosted images, um, you, well, you have two different options. If you want to host them yourself and have your own EXIF data, that's fine. You just put the URLs in here and we'll go ahead and pass that through into the uh, system. Somebody had a question? Somebody unmuted? Okay. So, uh, so if you add, uh, an image, you can go ahead and, um, let's see, we're going to add these images in here. And what it'll do is it's going to actually compress, resize. It's going to put the metadata into these images from above. And uh, it's going to put it into our content delivery network. Okay. So the more time. Oh, hello, hello. Patricia says, yep, now you can hear me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, it's still 2020, so that's why it's still happening, right? Uh so basically what I was what I was trying to say is that these were going to crop as well. So uh what I was showing on the other ones is that they've been reduced quite a bit and they still have the metadata. Um if you use this tool, we're going to see how these are actually cropped. Um so you're going to want to pick the right kind of image that is more of a pulled out uh, background kind of image. But see this, like this is now, you could put this into the website as sort of a, as a divider, you know, from the header into the website. And that's what we designed these for is to have like these little backgrounds, these little sections at 1280 by 320. And look at the size of this guys. It's a 1280 picture and it's only 30 kilobytes. I challenge you to reduce an image down to 20 or 30 kilobytes and then put it on a CDN and get it to go any faster than how we've got these images going. So uh, we've spent a lot of time and we also have the metadata in it. That's with the metadata, 30. Uh, so uh, we, we're just very proud of what we've done with that. Uh, one other thing I want to show you 
is this is revolutionary as far as I know. Nobody I have ever seen uh, with these metadata tools has done what we've done with the location. So we take the, the GMB location, okay? And then we find uh, nearby cities around there. So uh, these locations will start to change to various towns within a 15 mile radius of that area. So you don't have the exact same town. Your dates of your images are done at different times of the year. Uh, it's just a really interesting approach to it. And uh, it's all being done through this, this form here. Um, if you have icons, uh, they would all come in here. And uh, we'll just, I think we did, um, let's say, let's just take these black and white ones and put them in as uh, icons. So if we do this, these will reduce them down quite a bit. And uh, it'll also convert PNGs to um, JPEGs as well. So it'll give you the, the metadata that you're looking for inside of your icons, okay? Uh, so if we're looking at this image here, not sure how this is going to look because it's supposed to be a square. It might uh, might distort. I'm not sure actually. There we go. So this is reduced down to five kilobytes, and it's 125 by 83. So um, it's this is much more bigger than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this big. All right, on your web page. So it's a one to one. All right, guys. Uh, so that's that's how this all works. Now, if you had social media, you would go ahead and you put your social media in here. I'm just going to put Facebook in uh, for our Facebook group. And we're going to pass put put this in here. Now you can go ahead and save this to redo it another time, which I'm going to do. I'm going to save this. All right, and uh, you can also submit it. So when you submit, you have this here. And you have your uh, code that goes to MPP Magic Page plugin. Okay, so you just go ahead and hit export, and then we're going to go into a website here. Now this is uh, our template right now as it is, and we're going to go ahead and import in, and all of this stuff will start to change on here. All right, so I'll go into our Magic Page. We'll go into our settings. And we'll go into um, import, export, import, export data, import data, X fields, and spin text shortcodes, the top two. We're going to go ahead and find that file. It's not going to be a perfect website because we didn't spend you know, a tremendous amount of time. But if, if you see this, you're just going to overwrite and look up here in the corner and look for success. See how this says X field company. Now it's going to take that field and put it in there. Okay, so here's our placeholder video. Here's the icon that we had. Okay, all of that stuff that we put in, we're just having it in the page here. So these are those icons, right? Uh, here's that image there. Okay, here's here's if we had more testimonials, let's start to rotate in here. Uh, here's your Facebook, right? It's already in here. Now, if you had to lead simplify, it would show up right in here. Um, we took the keywords and we made pages out of them, okay? So if you click on company, you would just have to uh, go in and enter in some more information about that keyword. And we're working on a way for that um, to be um, in the form itself. All right. Um, looks like, okay. This is service page two, service page one. Um Here's your location page. I think something's not right. Have to take a look into that. Um, we did the page. Might have to set the location again because nothing re really works right if you don't have the location. So I'll set New York City. We'll put in 1,500 miles just because I only have five locations in here. All right. And uh, 
Just make sure that this is on. This is enabled. Delete spin text cache. All right. I think I know why this is doing it. I put on a static uh, speeding up software statically. I was testing out. Now I remember why I wasn't using that because it it uh, it leaves uh, you in cash for that. So let's see if that works now. There we go. All right. So this is your Lorem Ipsen for the About Us page. Here's one keyword, and it would have more information in here, and it's pulling in that image. Here's another one, and you would have your um, details here. Here's another keyword, and you would have your details here. You just go ahead and put that in. Uh, we're going to have that again in the form. Here is uh, your Lead Simplify page that has the various cities. So if you click on this, it was, this could have all of your keywords for Rochester, New York in here. And uh, Rochester Company, you know, all of this stuff can come in. Uh, if you haven't put 20 images in, it'll it'll put in these placeholders that images offline until you put all 20 in. So it's not a big deal. What you can do is just go back to our form, all right, and go to um, you can go to uh, my codes, and you see this one's here. And we did a save, so we saved a copy of it. So you can just go in and hit edit add more images, export it again, and just overwrite it inside of uh, Magic Page plugin. And you'll, you'll have yourself set up like that. Now, eventually we'd like to have a live connection directly. So you just synchronize it. Well, right now you have to output it and import it in. It's just a little uh, step to you there. Um, if you wanna look at uh, all of those images, you can just click on the media manager. And let's say for instance, you wanted to change the, the data that comes with this, you could just go ahead and edit this, these tags and put in something else in here and uh, hit save, okay? Um, so if you want to look at any of the other images, they're all right here uh, next to you, okay? So this is uh, this is Mass Page Tools. We do uh, have a data set generator, which I'll talk about on another webinar, hopefully a more successful <laughs> webinar. Uh, and uh, so that's that's basically that's basically how the two works. Um, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. And uh, so and we can start to take a look at some questions that you might have. Uh, let's see if I can turn on my camera again. Amazing different locations embedded uh, and that's sizing. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of what we've done with the images, um, connecting it with the GMB. Uh, that, I think that's uh, phenomenal. And uh, that's great. Now, anybody want to put in your questions, use the Q&A. Um, looks like this is a real easy way to, to go so I can publish it and uh, put your questions on here. Oh, uh, I just published your question. I want to show it. Um, okay, Jeff says, do you think that mass page can be utilized at some future date to do local citations? Yes, um, it sure can. Actually, it can be done right now. Um, one of the things that you can do with uh, mass page tools is keep that consistent name, address, and phone number. And then you can just work the structure of the site um, so you're basically just talking about the the topic in general. Uh, and uh, maybe what you can do is put in um, a bunch of other companies that uh, so so that you have you know sort of some uh, some relevancy on the topic. Now we've looked at like uh, could we scrape data from Yelp um, or uh, yellowpages.com and put them inside of the tool. That's probably something that would have to come on the magic page plugin side. 
because um, they're doing the actual pages unless I do a um, plugin that augments um, Magic Page plugin, then we would be able to do it. We just give you a short code that would insert in citations from other uh, scraped businesses so that your business would be in amongst other ones. And uh, we would just make sure that the links worked for yours, obviously, and uh, uh, it, would, it would help to, to build sort of a directory kind of thing. Uh, where's the best place to get images, FOMA says. Um, yeah, so the best place to uh, to get images I like to get them from is 123RF or from my client. Um, if my client is, say, a disc jockey, they have maybe pictures that photographers have given them, act, you know, prof professional pictures that they've given them the, the uh, rights to republish, right? As long as they can prove that they have the rights to republish them. Uh, then you know, good chance you can you can put them up on your website if it's for that client. Um, one two three RF. Uh, I do the seven fifty uh, plan. You get seven hundred fifty images per month for one hundred ninety nine bucks, and uh, we use it for various projects. So what we try to do is throughout the, the month, just download as many images as, as we need for that niche um, at a very low cost. Uh, and they're all licensed for you. So um, you do need to, I think, leave a, um, on the resources page, like, you know, where you got them from. Uh, but that that's easy enough to do. And just build a resources page and copy and paste. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's super super easy uh, to do. Um, let's see. Is there any other questions on the evergreen model? There was a few things that I was thinking. Um, I really appreciate George for giving me access to this big marker last minute like this. Um, I'm going to look at getting an account for this. Uh, any questions in the group? Got about 10 people in here. Um, I think you can even unmute. Let me think. Just raise your hand if you want. I can either unmute you if you wanted to talk directly instead of typing. That's fine. We can do that. Any other questions for me? Uh, we did send out a half price um, coupon code that you can use just for going to this webinar. Um, if you're interested, I will give you that now. And uh, even if you are already a member, this could give you a discount going forward. Uh, especially if you go with like the annual, it could save you a lot of money, actually. Um, hold on a second. Let me get that link here. This is only a 24 hour. So it started last night. It's nine hours left on this uh, coupon code. So, um, so I just put it in the chat under George, <laughs> uh, mass.page slash evergreen. And, uh, you can go ahead and click on the, um, the link there for evergreen, uh, the promo code, and then go down to the packages and pick the package that you're interested in. Um, or you can just put that into the coupon code. It's in Thrivecart. So, all right. Yeah, Jeff, I'll, I'll use George's affiliate link. <laughs> he deserves it, man, for bailing me out last minute like that. Uh, this thing works great. I really like it. Um, love to see how it would work with uh, with more people on it. But uh, we are doing much better off than we did with Vectero, that's for sure. <laughs> and the webinar, I don't know what happened with Webinar Ninja, but I think I got chopped. Um, not sure what happened with that, but that saves me some money because I'm not going to spend money on that if that thing is a piece of garbage. All right. Um, oh, let me let me show you one thing uh, about these images here. As long as this doesn't backfire on me, I'm going to turn switch my camera off. Oops, not my slides uh, screen. Let me, let me show you one thing about these images here. If we go into these, 
images. I want to show you how fast they load around the world. Okay. So we're just going to grab a wide image here, just at random. Okay. We're just going to click on it. And this loaded, see how fast it loaded? Now I want to show you how fast this loads um, around different servers around the world. Okay. This is dot com tools. And we'll take Madrid, we'll take uh, Tokyo, Johannesburg, Tel Aviv, Brisbane, Seattle, Montreal. All right, you're just picking some at random, okay? Start to do the test. This is testing that image to see how fast it loads. And 83 milliseconds that image loads, 90 milliseconds. So the very first time that that image is seen, it hasn't been cached yet. So it's the second time it goes through is the number that you have to take a look at. Um, so we're using um, Cloudflare and a you know, premium level of Cloudflare to, to get these images to you. So, but yeah, under 100 milliseconds is, is pretty fast, less than a tenth of a second. Um, and so that that's just going to help as you, you know, if we get the perfect mix of caching on the page and your images are coming from our CDN, um, you know, it, I think it's going to, it's going to be a, a great uh, system for you. Um, so your pages will load really fast if you're using our images for it. All right. Any questions? Um, questions or comments? And again, I do really appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. Uh, this is a, a value webinar, and I just wanted to share all this and then have all that stuff happen was just a you know very frazzling at first, but uh, we got through it and you guys stuck through it, so it really means a lot to me. Um, Yeah, so uh, Jeff was saying about the uh, Template Club and Geoholics. Um, yeah, so inside of the, um, yeah, I don't want to you know turn this into a sales uh, type of thing, but um, inside of the uh, Evergreen page, uh, let me just add that. Please forgive me, guys. If you came for value and you don't want to be pitched anything, I don't want you guys to feel like I'm pitching you. All right. So, um this webinar tool is called Big Marker. Um, all right, are we okay? So uh, let's see if we go to the Evergreen page here. Okay, you'll see down here uh, with the enterprise plan, we give you a thing called Geoholics, is another project that we're building, and uh, it's valued at three hundred dollars a month for the um, the uh, enterprise plan. Actually, it should say. And uh, so you would get this and you'd also get Leads Detective. And uh, I feel like I should, it's hard to do this all. If you guys are available to, to talk about this, I can kind of just walk you through very briefly how those two work. But there's also on the page further down, um, if you haven't gotten Magic Page plugin, you can get that here, Lead Simplify, Keith Best Training. Um, these are all the usual suspects inside the magic page uh, uh, group calls and things. Uh, but this is the new one. This is based on mass, our mass page form. And uh, if you click on this, um, you can see the various templates that um, Steven has been con connecting with uh, our form fields. So if, if you don't want to have to go ahead and lay out all of that data, uh, into the pages, you're going to have a series of these coming out. I think it's, um, you know, one or two a week, you know, 10 every month. Uh, so it's, it's really great. And you can use these um, to your heart's content. You can, you know, just niche down to one or you can do several. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, this is a great thing. It's called legenmagic.com. And uh, it's 27 a month for that. Um, if you do, um, if you did want to upgrade, uh, you could just switch to yearly if you're already on a monthly, or you could do monthly um, and get that discount code added to it. 
So if you've been paying 97 a month, you'll only be paying 45, uh, 48, 50 a month. Uh, if you go to annual, it brings you down to $348 a year for the uh, agency plan, which is a really great deal. So um, now let me, I guess I'll do it guys. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll, sh I'll just show you what Leeds Detective is just very briefly. Uh, hold on a second. Leeds Detective. If you go into my account, you'll get this account if you're, uh, I'll just go into George's account. Recognize George. All right. So if you're in here, you would go into um, your advanced search. And here you can do either a wide search or a narrow search. And these are defined uh, various domains and uh, people that you can call on for selling your leads to, um, to sell services to, um, to you know, sell your domains. I, I, I buy and sell domains all the time. So I'm always looking for people that have a similar uh, domain, okay? So this has some really cutting edge um, filters to it. So if you go to wide, it'll be any of these filters, okay? And it'll be one or the other. So for instance, um, you could say they have Facebook and they're in a certain state, okay? And this mostly is US data, but we'll have more later, but they have Facebook, okay? And uh, there's 24,000 that have Facebook and let's say the state is New York, right? And it's going to find those people that are in New York or have Facebook, right? Uh, or you could type in, because this is actually taking the uh, actual what you put in. So you could put in New York or New York like that, okay? Or you could do what we would call as a narrow search. And this is where it always gets weird uh, with my browser. Might have to restart restart this search. Whenever I am doing video sharing, it always does this. So you could say a registered state. And you have all of these things. So uh, registered state and is WordPress, right? Um, and so you can stack several of these all together. Yelp stars, whether they have a Google My Business account, whether they have a reviews, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So if you put in New York and uh, is WordPress, whoops. And we haven't crawled all of these uh, facets yet. So that's why WordPress didn't work. Um, but we could grab another one. I like I said, guys, this is in beta. Uh, so it's not 100% perfect, but you get early access to it. Um, a lot of these things are, um, niches are a great one because if you go in New York and you type in dentist, um, ta! <laughs> dental, register straight state, that should work. And maybe it's dental. This is weird guys. The, the curse of live. That usually works outstandingly. I haven't I haven't looked at this in a, a week, and their developer has been working on this. So I wonder if we're having an issue. Let me let's just go with domain name. We'll put in dental. So there, it found with all the domains that are in there, it found twelve that have dental and for New York, right? So we're really the the data we don't have as much as we're going to have, but it, we've been just working on the search algorithms and the crawling and getting that to work before you move it over to a bigger server. So that's how this one works. And you'll get early access to this and forever you'll you'll have access to it um, with, with this uh, enterprise. And then Geoholics uh, is a data set generator for locations. And uh, let's see if I... Uh, so the way this works is kind of similar to that. You set the area type. So if you're looking for, um, you got three things going on here. You, you've got your population range. So if you're building a mas Magic Page plugin um, site, you could do, I want suburban towns, because that's the sometimes the most valuable 
is suburban towns. And then the zip code starts with one. Okay. And this works really great. Uh, it has 496, uh, 98 uh, entries for that. And then what will end up happening is, is uh, you'll see some repeats because this is all based on zip code. So you have Albany several times and stuff. So we have a special download for Magic Page plugin. And if you click this, it'll download a data set just for Magic Page plugin that puts everything in the right fields for you. So you'll be able to import this in. Um, it has a space for the term ID. It, it makes each one unique. It has your latitude and longitude, which is all correct. Um, you have your country, the major cities are all put in here. You have your uh, population estimates, all this data, the area code, all this stuff can be pulled into your page uh, as, um, as fields. Because when you do an import into a location set, you have whatever extra fields they give you, um, you you'll, you'll be able to use those. So uh, like I said earlier uh, in the group, Geoholics is ahead of Go uh, Leads Detective and ImageFly um, as far as the, you know being refined. But the Leads Detective is catching up. Um, we've been putting a lot of effort into Leads Detective. Uh, ImageFly is taking a little bit more time um, because I've been trying to fix the little things in uh, mass, mass page tools. And uh, we only have so much developers to go around for everything. All right, so let's uh, stop sharing screen. Okay. Uh, big marker, yep. Yeah. Any other questions? I see a Q&A. Let's see, new question. Does it work with Divi? Um, Zuniki, uh, it, it does. Uh, anywhere where Magic Page plugin works, it will work. Um, people have used Divi with Magic Page plugin. I don't recommend it. I recommend Beaver Builder and I recommend Elementor. Um, I haven't tried it too much with uh, Brizzy, which is sort of a new one. Um, I think Brizzy is more focused on the cloud right now, so I don't really recommend it. Uh, but Elementor has the most fancy stuff to go along with your Magic Page plugin. And Beaver Builder, I feel, uh, has been good over the years. Um, but I think that they're falling behind on features and things like that. So um, I've been using Elementor more um, of late. So I'll add that. Any other questions you guys have? Like I said, the uh, the evergreen uh, code is only good um, for you know just over eight hours. So if, if that is helpful to you, uh, as a little thank you for being on this call with me. I I appreciate that. Um, any other questions? Overview of ImageFly. Okay. So uh, ImageFly I can't show you right now um, because it's it's just it's a local machine right now. Uh, but basically, what ImageFly is is uh, I got it on my, on my board here. But basically, hmm. I let the let me just explain on the, on, a, on a high level what it does. Basically, if you have a URL and um, In the URL, you know, as you have like a, you could have a long URL, right? We have things that can get inserted into the URL that will make a dynamic image every time that that image gets hit, it'll make a specific image for that display, okay? So uh, we're doing various layers inside that dynamic image so that it's, it's pretty revolutionary of how it's going to work. Um, and so you'll be able to set up with your account a background series of images that are all your backgrounds. Then you'll be able to put in your logos and then you'll be able to put in your headlines, your subheadlines, and your description. And it'll mash up all of that stuff into a, into a page. When you, when you trigger that URL, it'll make a, a random image that'll come back that's all customized, okay? So um, you get that if you get the enterprise plan, we add you into that software as well. Um, so those are the three that we're working on in 2020 and we'll, we'll have more in 2021. Um, and we'll, we'll see what we can do for our enterprise people. Um, 
Let's see. Any other questions? There's a chat. Okay. Um, any other questions for me? Hopefully you guys enjoyed and, and you know learned something from the uh, presentation. Um, again, I want to thank George for helping us out because this uh, thing just went crazy. What does Magic Page plugin do? Okay, so Magic Page plugin is a WordPress plugin that um, basically will do a few things. One is it'll it'll now allow spin text throughout a website. Spin text is uh, if you're not familiar with spin text, just look it up. S P I N T A X, and it'll it'll show different variations uh, inside a page. So what we're doing with Mass Page Tools is we're leveraging the power that's built into the engine of Magic Page Plugin to display different images, different texts, different headlines, um, all throughout the page, right? And be able to do it from external into the website. Uh, setting all of those fields inside a Magic Page Plugin takes a lot of time because you got to hit enter, edit, you got to put the the data in. You got to save. You got to know like what fields to add. You got to label each field. We've done all of that for you. So it's very simple. You just fill out the form. You you hit the plus and you add another option. And as you do that, it just keeps giving you um, more and more um, options to run. So our plugin basically writes the the import code that drives what Magic Page will just put into and inject into your, your WordPress uh, template. So you can use my template, you can use Steven's templates, uh, which are really fancy and nice looking. Um, uh, and you can make your own. Uh, you can you know take a look and say, I, I, I like Steve's templates, but I wanted to add this to it. Well, because it's built in Elementor, you can go ahead and do that. You can add it, change it, twist it, <laughs> you know, make it different the way you want it to be. Um, and you can optimize it. Uh, we have a really nice Facebook group that uh, allows us to uh, um, to meet and get on there. We do a live call on Sundays. Um, we're always, you know, trying to add new videos and new features to the Mass Page tool. So um, that's the whole idea is to uh, you know to make it the best that we can make it. All right. Let me just go back to our presentation for a minute. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, let me just hit these key benefits here so you guys understand if you, you know, joined us late. Uh, what we have is a simple form to fill out with some auto-generated content, and we're adding more to that as we go forward. Um, we have some very interesting things that we're testing out, and uh, we're making the forms uh, ImageFly compatible. So it'll automatically, even without an ImageFly account, it'll generate um, some stock dynamic images for your pages. So that's gonna be really cool. Uh, you'll be able to save and clone the forms um, that you you can do that now. So you can just change the business name or hit a different GMB and change the logos and you have a different you know website output if you've done spin text in them. Uh, you have your images resized, optimized, cropped and hosted on a CDN globally. And you uh, have the ability to send the form to clients. So I didn't even show you guys that. Um, that's one of people's favorite uh, options. And I'll show you that in a minute. That works with the agency level and enterprise level where you can actually have them fill out the form and send it back to you um, without uh, having to be there with them. We have spin text enablement from Word AI for many of the fields. Um, so you can just uh, change that. And the Word AI also changes the description inside of the uh, f the images captions. Uh, that's on hold for right today because we just up updated the image thing, but it'll be back in play. And you'll have different descriptions from uh, spin text into those images as well. Uh, we have obviously innovative features. We have fast deployment of sites with this program. Uh, you have Elementor, so you can always expand um, these websites or Beaver Builder or anything in WordPress, you can expand them and you have that supportive uh, Facebook group, okay? So um, things to remember, this saves you time in helping to build pages very quickly without forgetting all the simple steps. It produces the framework for evergreen websites. So you can rinse and repeat. 
And if you purchase the agency level higher, you can have your clients virtually build the website for you by filling in a client form. And this works on Windows and Apple because it's web-based. And this tool will allow you to gain the upper hand on your reputation by building dozens of high-ranking profile sites about your business and pushing down bad reviews from competitors likely. I forgot to go back to all of that stuff, but <laughs> that's in my, my slides there. Somebody had a chat. Uh, thanks, Daryl. Yeah, you're very welcome, Rich. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the, uh, the form that goes to your clients, let me uh, share my screen again. All right. Um, hold on one second. All right. So we are here, right? Because this is an agency plan, you can now send this form to your client with a private, like a message. Okay. So if I put in ledyard at doctor.com, um, uh, oh wait, that's my name. I'm sorry. I'll just put the name in there. This is who it's going to. Oops, uh, Fred Rogers. Um, and Fred, please fill out the rest. And we'll have videos inside these so that it'll work out better for them. He says, are you sure you want to send Fred Rogers this? Bang, it goes out to Fred Rogers. And uh, if we go into my mail account, this is just my testing mail. Uh, let's see here. Here it is, uh, website builder form. Okay, and if you look at the URL, first of all, it comes from whoever owns the account. So if this is George's account, it would come from him and it would be admin at builder, uh, builderform.net, which is just a private label domain that we have. Okay, um, and then if they had the password, the password would be right here. I didn't put a password in this. And you click on this and we're gonna change the logo in the upper left corner so it'll be your logo. Um, so if you have an agency, you'll be able to fill it in. So they could go ahead and they could go ahead and put in their, uh, yeah, somewhere.com, you know, and uh, we, we would like to make it so that only the fields that you want them to fill in uh, show up. So you'll have a little check marks and you'll be able to add in the fields that you want to have them fill in. So they can fill in the niches, uh, they can fill in the benefits, things like that. When they're done, they go ahead and send it. Uh, they could either save it and keep working on it, or they could submit it. And when they submit it, it goes into your account as completed, and you can go ahead and uh, process it into a Magic Page plugin. So that's one of the features that people just absolutely love. It's you know going to be more private labeled because the builderform.net will have your your logo in it. Uh, but yeah, that that works with. Uh, uh, I forgot about that with uh, agency <clears throat> and uh, and above. So um, I think that that that's um, a real good bonus for people uh, looking to save a little bit of work. All right. Uh, let's see. What's your Facebook group, Daryl? I have a mess. Uh, yep. You can join the mass page uh, Facebook group. We'll go ahead and get you approved on that. Uh, so it's about 3.15, about two and a half, 15, two hours and 15 minutes into this. I do appreciate everybody sticking with us. Uh, we we started off with like, you know, 20 people and then we had all of the, but at least half of the people are still with us. So I got to tell you, I really, really appreciate that. The fact that you guys uh, tuned back in. Um, we might have to do a replay. Um, we do have the recording. Uh, we might have to do a, another replay of this topic at another point. I'd like to do sort of a series of a few different topics to kind of help people out and uh, love your feedback inside of our Facebook group uh, of what we can do. Now that we have this big marker uh, tool, uh, this could be this could be very helpful. So I'll, I'll get with George and get an affiliate link for it. Uh, and last call and questions. I think we're good. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. Thanks for Richard uh, for you stopping in. Uh, all you guys have a have a great Saturday. Um, thank you, George, especially. And uh, have yourself a wonderful day ahead. And hopefully, you guys picked up something from this.
All right. Take care now.